Hello students, this is Professor Chalai, and in this video, we're just give, I'm just going to give you a short tutorial on how to use WebMO and ORCA, those are softwares, to simulate the absorption spectrum of naphthalene, the uh, organic structure which is uh, shown here. Now most organic structures uh, is usually drawn in this very minimal format where oftentimes you might not see any labels for any um, atoms at all. But within this structure are the implicit atoms um, uh, not shown just to make the, atom, uh, the structure look nicer and cleaner. For example, at every joint, there is a carbon atom that I filled in here. And so that, the red here are all the carbon atoms. And then we know that each carbon atom typically likes to have four bonds to it. So if there's not four bonds on a carbon atom, you assume that there is a hydrogen bonded to that carbon atom that you cannot see. And so if you were to like mentally fill out all of the hydrogen atoms, this is what that entire naphthalene structure would look like. So this is the molecule that we're, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to calculate the absorption spectrum for. And so to do that, you'd first need to go to WebMO using the address that, uh, that I provide for you and use the username and password that, um, that I provide to you. Okay. Once you log in, you'll see an interface like this, uh, except, you know, this will probably all be blank because this is the list of previously run calculations. To start a new calculation, uh, the first step you're going to have to do for any calculation is something we call a geometry optimization. So the first calculation that I'm going to run here is going to call be called a geometry optimization. So you click new job, create new job, and this little uh, screen right here lets you draw the molecule that uh, that you want to calculate. Now we're going to do naphthalene that looks like this, but I'm going to draw it looking like this without the hydrogens. I'm going to assume all the hydrogens are, uh, I'm going to show you how the code can fill in all of the extra hydrogens for you automatically. So what I need to do is draw all of these carbon atoms connected to each other like this, and then put in the relevant double bonds where they need to be. So I come here, this is the periodic table selector, select carbon. And once you do that, you can just start drawing the shape. Click to add an atom and click and drag to connect that atom to something else. You don't have to be perfect as you're sketching this out. The, the code is going to neaten it up all for you. So that's my first hexagonal shape, right? This first hexagonal shape. And then I need to connect it to a second one. So. Notice if you sometimes you click and you drag and you add an extra one like that, you can either undo or use some of the tools over here to clean that all up. So that's my second hexagonal structure. Notice this doesn't look very clean and that's okay. Now recognize that there's some double bonds in there. So I'm going to fill in all the double bonds exactly uh, where they should be. So to do that, you just click on an, an atom that you already have and drag to another atom that's already there and it'll just make that single bond into a double bond, right? Double, double, this one's a double, this one's a double. And now this looks exactly like this. All of the balls represents, represent a carbon atom and the lines connecting them is a bond, right? Now to get all of these implicit hydrogens, you could either uh, click here, click hydrogen, and then drag from here, drag out, boom, it adds a hydrogen bond there. But you know, you'd have to do this for every single carbon and you could miss one or so. So the easier way to do that is to go up here, clean up, and click add hydrogens. And it automatically hi add hydrogens to every single carbon that doesn't have four bonds. And that's it. Now the structure obviously doesn't look very good to start with. So to clean that up, you do clean up, mechanics optimize. This uses not quantum mechanics, just or classical mechanics to make your structure look nicer. And so this now resembles uh, a better molecule. This is our starting geometry though. This is not a real, uh, this is a guess for what this molecule would look like. If you click this little tool here, you can rotate it around just to see what it might look like in three dimensional space. And you can play around with that. But to actually do a uh, computational optimization on this using quantum mechanics you will have to come down here to choose engine, right? It, it will give you this warning that the molecule is nearly but not exactly symmetric. We can just hit OK. That's fine. And it will 
bring up this little engine, uh, this little screen here. Make sure you choose Orca, right? There's a lot, few options here. Make sure you choose Orca, then hit Next, and this screen will pop up. Here is where you plug in all of the information for the calculations that you want. And you would also want to write these options down in your lab notebook. So for the job name, you could give it anything you'd like. Uh, just make sure that it, um, you know, it makes sense. So there it had C10H8. That was just the number of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. You could leave it as that. This was naphthalene, right? I could call it naphthalene. Um, but I already had a calculation called naphthalene, so I'll call it naphthalene-2 just not to confuse it. For the calculation type, this first type, the first thing we need to do is something called a geometry optimization, right? This will get the geometry of the molecule perfectly calculated according to quantum mechanics. We need that before we can calculate the absorption. For the method, there's a whole range of methods here, but we are going to choose PBE0, sometimes called PBEO, right? For the basis set, we're going to leave it at this 6-31G, parentheses D. For the auxiliary basis set, we'll leave it at none. Now for the charge here, my molecule has zero charge, so I'll leave that as zero. But your molecule may not. So if there's a negative one charge, you'll have to add negative one. Sorry, negative one. If there's a positive two charge, you know, just put two there. Make sure your charge matches the charge of the molecule that you should be calculating. Multiplic multiplicity, we'll, we'll leave that as singlet, and do not tick this unrestricted box, otherwise your calculation is going to take a while. Then you head on over to the advanced tab, and there's solvent one here is something we want to check too. For the solvent, uh, typically that's going to be water, right? There's a whole bunch of options here, but we want our solvent to be water, and then this will be black. There we go. So make sure that the advanced tab is checked. Everything here is correct. I'm doing naphthalene 2, and I hit this button here. That will start the calculation. When you do that, you'll come back to this main screen, and you'll see the status of your calculation. It could either be waiting to run because other people are running it on the computer, supercomputer, or the server at the same time, or it could be running, and it'll take some time to run. Now, this will take quite a few minutes to run and so we don't want to wait until that's done. I did go ahead and run naphthalene earlier. See it says naphthalene geometry optimization with ORCA. I did the identical calculation earlier and when it's done running you'll see a complete status and you'll see the time it took to run. Your molecules are much bigger than this naphthalene calculation so it'll take much longer than uh, eight minutes here. But when it's done running you can click this little uh, spyglass, I guess, or magnifying glass to view the output. And what you'll see here, I know it looks identical, right? But this is, let's rotate it around, this is the new geometry calculated with quantum mechanics. This is what it looks like, right? If you scroll down, you'll see some more information about the, you know, energy of the particle and stuff like that. But what we want is to use this new calculated geometry to do our actual absorbance calculation. So you'll click for the actual absorbance calculation once the geometry optimization is finished. You click new job using this geometry and it'll open up that drawing tool again with that new geometry. Since this geometry is perfect, already calculated, we don't need to touch it. In fact, if you do touch it, uh, you will change it and then you'll need to like restart again. So you don't want to change any of the atom positions, you just want to start a new calculation with this geometry. You go, you do the same steps, similar steps, choose engine, it'll tell you it's not quite symmetric, which is fine. Choose Orca again. And now we're going to do what we call an absorbance calculation. So we're doing naphthalene, this is my second run here. So instead of geometry optimization now, I'm going to scroll down here to excited states and UV vis. That's UV visible absorption. Right? You also f there are a few different options now. For the method, again, choose PBEO. For the excited state method, we'll choose TDDFT right there. Okay? The basis set is the same 6 31G parentheses D, no auxiliary basis set. Charge, make sure that's set to whatever your charge of your molecule is. Uh, always make sure that's set properly. Singlet multiplicity, make sure unrestricted is unchecked. And again, in advance, you want to make sure water 
is uh, selected because these are absorb absorption in uh, aqueous solutions. Okay, and you hit next, and this should already start the calculation. Now, see, because I already have one running, this is queued, right? And it says you're placed in the queue. So if you run a calculation and you see queued, oh, start running. Um, it just means that somebody else is running a calculation and it, the you know, server might take a while. Both of these are running at the same time, which just means that it will slow down. So if your classmates are running calculations at the same time as you, um, it just means your calculation will take longer because the same computer has to do two different calculations. So with that said, it's better to get started on this earlier. That way you're sure that you know, lots of people aren't trying to like, run these calculations in the last minute to get it all done. Um, I'm going to kill these calculations. To kill them or cancel them, you just hit the red X and then it'll ask you if you want to kill it and you do that and it'll just say failed because I killed it. I'm going to do that because I don't want to you know, use up the computer running calculations I've already done. But this is an excited states calculation that I did earlier that did complete, that didn't take that long, right? And I'll show you what the results look like. So you click on this uh, hourglass, you see the molecule again. And if you scroll down, you'll see the data from this particular um, calculation. You scroll down, 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 right? It gives you charges on the atoms. And here, the excited states, this is what tells you the UV vis absorption. It gives you the wavelength in nanometers, right? And how much light it will absorb. And to actually see it as a spectrum, you make sure you choose nanometers for your excitation units. And if you want to see what it is, uh, you, you'll click this pie glass. Set your width here to about 50 nanometers. You can play around with this number. It will broaden what your spectrum looks like, but 50 is a good, is a good value. So if you click this pie glass, or hourglass, you'll see this, the spectrum of the molecule, right? Now I want to point out naphthalene as a solid looks white, right? It doesn't really absorb any light. That's why it looks white. It reflects all of the colors of the the visible rainbow, sorry, all of the visible colors, the colors in the rainbow. And those are between, as you, if you remember, 400 to around 750 nanometers. So that's, you can see here, there's no light absorbed in the visible region, 400 to 750. All the light absorbed is in this UV region. In fact, this goes negative, you don't want that. So what I'll do is change my plot settings so that my plot starts at zero, not negative, right? like that, and I can do that by clicking this button here. Now this graph, you could just, you know, click on this here to save the image, right? And I'll save it as a PNG, plot.png. But, you know, if you save it exactly like this, if I wanna open this, um, you know, the numbers here are very, very tiny, especially if you're gonna put it in your paper, you won't be able to see it. And really the only good way I, ha I found to like change the text size relative to the image is to make this window smaller. So if I make this window smaller, right, something like this, and then I click save PNG and I open this, now the plot size relative to the, sorry, the text size relative to the plot is more readable. I know this little checkered background just means it's transparent. And that's it. That's how you can calculate the UV vis absorption Right? It calculates how much the light absorbed in the UV or visible region of any molecule you can imagine. Now, you can play around with this um, as much as you'd like. Just know that the bigger your molecule, the longer it will take. So it could potentially take hours and hours, uh, especially if others are using the, um, the computers at the same time. All right, so that'll end this hopefully uh, instructive um, tutorial. See ya.